Okay, good evening and welcome to the January 22nd, 2020 Board of Selectmen's meeting. On the agenda this evening, we have public service announcements. We have presentation of the businesses of the year from the Sturbridge Tourist Association. We have department reports, police, town administrator. We have a few action items, Grand Trunk Railroad construction, letter of intent to apply for an economic development incentives from New England Cold. We have a farmer's market seasonal liquor permit discussion. Old business, 50 Fakwa Road appeal of a water bill. And we have review of the 2019 town administrator school. We have new business, correspondence, citizens forum, and then we adjourn. Priscilla, any service? No. Oh. Jace? No. No. Mary? Um, I just have a press release from our finance director. The Town of Sturbridge is now accepting applications for the Town of Sturbridge tax assistance for low income senior and disabled citizens program. If you would like assistance in paying your real estate tax bill and you are 65 years or older or have a state recognized disability and your total gross household income does not exceed $20,000 if single or $30,000 if married or if others reside in the household, you may be eligible. Applications are available at the Sturbridge Town Hall and the Finance Department at the Sturbridge Senior Center or online at www.town.sturbridge.ma.us. The deadline to file an application is February 15th. Okay. Also, um, special town meeting Monday the 27th at 7 o'clock up at uh, the regional high school. And on February 1st, there is going to be a winter outing sponsored by the Fire Department and Recreation Department. There'll be ice skating with lights. It'll be dark. Hopefully there'll be ice. The snowman building, um, games. And <laughs> See, everybody's awake. <laughs> and hot chocolate. So everyone's invited to go and to enjoy. Okay, that's it. Did you? Oh, you just put that there for yeah, I just put that there. Oh, okay. Okay. So next on the agenda, police department report, and the chief is not here, but presentations. Oh, presentation. Did I say we were awake? Presentation. Kevin, could you come up, please, with? <laughs> Got your whole committee? Yeah, uh, we have four of our five members here tonight. Okay, and could you all introduce yourself, please, for the record and the folks at home? Yeah, good evening. I'm Brian Amity. I'm the chairman of the Sturbridge Tourist Association. Tom Chamberlain, vice chair. And Nick Salvador. And Kevin Filchak, economic development and tourism coordinator. Okay, who's the fifth member? I'll do it. Oh, our, sorry, our other member is Dawn, but she's going to be accepting an award on someone else's behalf, so oh, she's, <laughs> she's going to stay in the audience in the for the moment. Right, right. She okay. can stay in the audience. No problem. So, Kevin, would you like to explain? Uh, absolutely, but I'm actually going to defer to our chair, uh, Brian, uh, right. to um, explain. This, this year we decided to uh, recognize businesses in the tourist sector here in Sturbridge that uh, it hasn't been done in, uh, since we've been in existence. So we, what we did, we sent out surveys and we got 75 responses, which was pretty, pretty good for our first, the first attempt. So this is our, going to be one of our annual uh, items that we do to recognize businesses in four categories, the eat, stay, shop, and play which is kind of like our tagline of what we, what we go after. So the, we analyzed all these at the December meeting. Uh, we went through them all and we picked the winners for each category. Um, the winners will receive not only a plaque, but they'll receive a one year membership in Discover Central Mass, which is the regional tourist uh, council for our area. They'll also receive from the Tourist Association a $1,000 uh, 
marketing grant which they can use to market their business and I do encourage them to do so. Um, this is our way of taking our tourism money and paying it back to these businesses that have been in our community. Some of them are fairly new but some have been around for a long long time and uh, myself it was when we went through these you know, I thought, boy, there's, there's so many businesses in town here that really could have won, <laughs> won these awards um, because we've had a lot of good businesses here in town that are still here. So we'll, we'll keep doing this, and uh, this is, like I said, our first, first attempt at it. So we'll, we'll keep plugging away and keep doing this. So uh, without further ado, I guess I'd like to uh, recognize the first person in our uh, shopping category. It's Alternatives for Health, and this is going to be Sally Green. She's representing uh, Alternatives for Health. And Sally um, has a small little shop near Yankee Candle. Um, it's, it's a unique operation. If you haven't ever been in there, you should really drop in and see, see her uh, operation there. But she also, uh, with a couple friends of hers, did the first annual herb festival. Mm -hmm back in October. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was successful. She, I'm sure she learned a lot and uh, hopefully it'll be a continuing, uh, continuing venue for her. So without further ado, Sally Green. Hand too. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Sherry, go ahead. Next. Sherry, next. Sally, nice to see you. Congratulations. Very good, Sally. Yeah. Brian, she's already got her oh, permit yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> I know she hasn't come for the funding yet. <laughs> That'll be coming. Well, she has permission to do it. <laughs> okay. In our next category is the eating category. Now, boy, we had <laughs> a lot of choices here, and it, you, you think of all the number of fine restaurants here in Sturbridge, from the small up to the larger scale. So it was, uh, we're recognizing one of the businesses who's been here for, I don't know how many years he's been here, but um, he's doing an excellent job. Uh, Ken Yakamara of Sturbridge Seafood. Uh, mm -hmm. Ken's also took uh, a building that was vacant, as you know, uh, from the old Admiral T.J. O'Brien's and turned it into uh, Sturbridge Porterhouse. So Ken's uh, a, a, a great, great chef, and, uh, and uh, he's, he's doing a fantastic job, which proves that you don't have to go to Boston, the Cape, or Maine for a great seafood. You can get it right here in Sturbridge. So, Ken Yakamura. Congratulations. I help give credit to Bill Pond on us, too. Right here. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Congratulations. I love Porterhouse. Whoever the signs. We all do. Kevin? Yeah, that feels so beautiful. I missed it. Clever building. Clever building. Yeah, but they're clever. All right, so our next category is the stay category. And Sturbridge has a number of fine lodging properties here in town, from small to large. And this, the one who won it was the number one uh, property on TripAdvisor here in, in town. It's the Comfort Inn and Suites. Now, the Comfort Inn, as you know, has been a, was a part of the Fantaroni family for many, many years. They took the old Colonial, tore it down, and made a fantastic property over there. Um, it's now owned by Prestige Hospitality out of New York, um, and but they're doing gangbuster work over there, and and, uh, and we're proud to have them here as as part of our community. Um, 
The representative who will be accepting the award is Dawn Merriman. Now, Dawn is a member of STA. She did not vote, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you begin. And she wasn't even at the meeting when we announced it. <laughs> so there's no, no collusion. <laughs> so without further ado, Dawn Merriman. Thank you, I'll shake your hand. I'll shake your hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our last award is in the play category. Now, you have to think about, okay, what is the play category? <laughs> <laughs> and where, where do we play here in Sturbridge? Well, yeah, you really got to put your thinking cap on because, you know, when I, when I thought about this, there's really quite a few places that can fall into this category. So we have a, a, a new business here in town, which is kind of a, a unique concept that's starting to happen more and more around uh, many, many different areas. Um, and I know there's one of these in Webster and there's now one here in Sturbridge. Um, the winner is Escape the Pike. Now, if you don't know anything about escape rooms, you should really <laughs> kind of <laughs> investigate it. Um, I know I had my own little escape rooms when I wanted to hide away from people, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a little, a little dis different concept. Um, so we're glad to have them here in Sturbridge as, as part of our community. So without further ado, uh, Dave and Megan Jakewith. Both Army veterans, correct? Yes. We're, yes. We're proud to have you at the prior service. Thank you very much Thanks. for the service. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Congratulations. I've been wanting to get in and do that. Okay. Part of your annual retreat, right there. Oh, yeah. We're gonna be stuck together. They'd have to come get us after. So. Is it true that you you can get out at any time if you need to, though, right? Yeah. 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 So we're, we're glad to have all four of these uh, winners as part of our Sturbridge Tourist uh, community, and we look forward to continuing to do this uh, on a continual basis. And I would encourage the Board of Selectmen to look at actual businesses that are not tourist-related mm -hmm. to put your thinking cap on to reward some of those businesses that have been in town for quite a number of years as well. So uh, you don't have to give them a thousand dollar grant, but <laughs> just recognition would be very good. Um, I just want to say, for the record, I think it's an excellent idea, and I'm happy that, in addition to the recognition, which everybody does like, that you know you put some funding behind it, which can actually help them grow their business. That you put some money behind it, and I just wanted to ask: Did you have like a list of criteria, or is it just more informal when you went through it, the? It was, it was informal. I'm sure. Again. Mary, as we, as we go f down the line, we may tweak it a little bit to be a little bit more with the criteria. Kevin, uh, Kevin sent out all the information. Yeah, so we, we sent out a press release, which was put in the paper in the Surge, Vill in the Surge Villager to say, you know, we're, we're accepting nominations. And it was an online form that people could fill out. We had 75 nominations. And it was basically what business why do you want to nominate them and pick the category? Yeah. And the STA uh, looked at that list. They reviewed it. They didn't consider anybody that wasn't on that list. Right. Um, so it was all, all nominated businesses. But going forward. Some nominated more than once. And was oh, that yes. one? Oh, yeah. They were nominated, yeah. By yeah. the amount of nominations yeah, somebody yeah. got? Yeah. But that wasn't the that deciding. Wasn't the deciding. No, no, I know. Yeah. But I just yeah. wondered if that was one of the. Yeah. One, of, one of them. And sometimes you look at what are the unique things that uh, the business has done to the community as well. So Because they're great businesses. But I'm just thinking about the other businesses that were nominated. Yeah, I know. It, get a little yeah. sense of what you were looking for. Yeah, it, so. You know, as I said, it was very, diff very yeah. difficult because there is quite a large number of businesses when you really think of it that uh, you could have given these awards to and, and hopefully we'll, uh, 
we've Kevin and I kind of talked informally, not before the board. Maybe we can do it twice a year or something like that. Yeah. You know, so. And the STA is is considering a number of different initiatives in the coming year, given the new branding and marketing strategy that they're doing. So there, there's a lot of new things that are probably going to be coming down the pike in 2020. Yeah. So in addition to this new annual program. Yeah. We want to keep Sturbridge uh, in the minds of many, many people to keep coming here. So, no, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So good. Okay, thank you. We thank Great you very night. much. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. I know. <laughs> it's like town meeting. <laughs> when your issue's over with? <laughs> I just told the people that last night. <laughs> well, it happens anyways. Okay, next we do have the police department report. Um, for the chief tonight is Lieutenant Dessert. Good evening, Earl. Good evening. It's my first time doing a report, so please don't beat me up too bad. Save it for the chief when he comes <laughs> in. You're bigger than us. <laughs> um, I'll just start with November, just go over the, the highlights, I guess. Uh, one of the big things that happened in November was the chief and myself, uh, along with Officer Dana and Giordano, attended the AAA awards. Uh, I'd say, I don't know the exact number, but again this year we got the gold award for traffic safety if you go into our lobby I'm sure you have been it's loaded with gold awards every year there's a little bit of a special speech at the AAA award for our accomplishments so um, that was that was nice to receive again officer Dana and Giordano were present because they were nominated as traffic safety heroes for their um, involvement with traffic safety enforcement in, in the town and, and what they've done throughout the year um, that was probably the, the highlight of November. The training was just regular routine training. And you can see the calls for service if you have any questions. Okay, any questions from the board on November? I just have a general question. It's not that hard to answer. With the drug arrests, what, you know, I know it's been about constant. What kind of drug arrests are they mostly for? It varies. Uh, cocaine, heroin. Uh, you're not. We're not seeing the marijuana arrest obviously anymore. But the the cocaine, heroin, pills. We get it all. So. All right. Thanks. Um, December. <coughs> uh, we had the annual. For operations wise, we had the annual senior Christmas dinner at the senior center. 56 people in attendance. They all got served. A police officer volunteered to go over there and serve the seniors sp uh, spaghetti and meatballs. It's donated by Village Pizza. And uh, every one of them, people that show up get some type of gift. We had Santa Claus there. So, uh, which Jackson went dressed up as Santa Claus. And that's a very successful event, uh, very popular, and it's, people love it every year. Uh, Barbara Boito, uh, she really spearheads that and coordinates the efforts down there to get everything together, get the gifts, and, and um, then everybody just comes together and seems like every year it runs smoothly. We also attended the um, uh, breakfast at the Senior Center. Um, Leslie Wong had us over at the Senior Center, and we went over for breakfast, spent some time over there, talked with the seniors. That was another successful event for operation wise training uh, sergeant Payne attended a, a, a noteworthy training went to the middle management command training school through FBI LEA which is um, almost a two-week school there's a series of three he's got one more to complete and he'll have the trilogy award like most of our supervisors go through they go through the line supervisor middle management uh, school and then executive series so uh, it's a great, great course put on by very talented instructors, bringing the best management for police to us. So we're we're always happy to send people there, and and we're very fortunate. Uh, the Massachusetts Police Training Council has had this 
uh, training funded for the first time in a long time. We used to have to pay for it, but it's been free for the last year or two now through, through the state. So that's really good. Um, I think that was all that was noteworthy for December. Everything else was kind of normal. Uh, one uh, big thing that I'd like to mention that's important that the community knows is one of our new officers, Nicole Patterson, was recently uh, given orders. She's in the Army and she was uh, assigned to leave. She leaves Saturday actually for Afghanistan for uh, nine months, at least nine months. So uh, we want to wish her a safe and speedy return. Uh, she's, been a, she's only been on the department a short time, but has already proven herself to be an asset. We're going to miss her while she's gone. So. Okay, and accreditation starts next week? And next week. It starts Tuesday morning. Um, I'm actually coordinating the accreditation this year. Uh, we went through a self-assessment a few months ago. That went fine. We had a mock assessment. Northboro Police came out and did a, a mock, and uh, we passed that no problem. Now we got the real thing coming out uh, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't see any uh, issues with it, and uh, it'll be a nerve-wracking three days, but yeah. we'll get through it, so I'm, I'm not sure worried about will. it. Any questions from the board? Priscilla? No, I just want to say uh, I commend the police force for what it does because I'm watching, I'm looking at these numbers, <clears throat> the year to date, and some of them have gone down, and that's because of your vigilance, and I think that's, that's a plus. I mean, that speaks volumes. You know, some of them have gone up, but a lot of the serious incidents have gone down from the year prior, which is, again, congratulations, because it's to the vigilance of all the police force, and we're very lucky to have you. Thank you for recognizing that. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I just had a comment. I'm sure it's a slip on the accident report for November. The names aren't redacted. They're usually oh. redacted. Yeah, I'm sure that is a slip. Yeah. I will have to. Uh, they redacted in December, but. Uh, okay. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Can know what's going on, who's. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else then? That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, next town administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a couple things. Your uh, Board of Selectmen retreat is February 1st at 9 a.m. at the public house uh, in the card room. Uh, same format as you've enjoyed before. Um, and we'll spend some time together outlining your goals for the upcoming year and whatever else you want to talk about. So February 1st, um, as I put out uh, by email the other day, the Officer Benoit case is resolved. The arbitrator ruled in favor of the town and upheld the termination of that officer. So we'll be moving forward with recruiting uh, for that position. Uh, there is a small window to appeal and we'll have to see what happens. And finally, uh, we did get preliminary or first run of the cherry sheets from the governor's recommended uh, budget. So on revenue, on the revenue side, the governor's recommendation is $72,000 more than the current year. On the expense, expense side, it's $40,000 less than the current year. So the, the net is one twelve, hundred twelve thousand dollars of difference uh, to the town for the next budget year and we'll be using that's the unrestricted yes yep unrestricted <coughs> well some of its school funding some <coughs> of its unrestricted so overall yeah but it's not chapter 90 funds no the chapter 90 funds uh we'll, we're getting about forty thousand dollars more for that Ooh, next good. year yeah so which can spend it we, we, we have some big projects. We'll bring those to you for, uh, for that source. But um, that's what I had. Okay. Any Did questions? Answer any on questions? No. no. Okay. Okay. Next, um, we have uh, action items Grand Trunk Trail construction. Uh, yes. We're going, we got a. Tom, you want to come down, please? We got a, a what is it, a member item or a earmark 27 years ago or something like that? <laughs> Some time ago. 2005. 2005. 2005. Yep. So we're at the point now where we're actually designing the project, but of course, you know, since 2005, the cost of materials have gone up. And uh, DOT is doing the design, and the new budget is far exceeds the original budget. 
one of the items in that budget is paving of River Road and Farquhar Road. So in order to keep the project complete, you know, do what we anticipated doing, uh, we're proposing at the staff level that the town pick up the paving piece and we're going to pave that area anyway. We'll just hold until the project's complete and then use our local resources to pave or do the road restoration and that allow the grant funds to pay for the trail. And that's kind of the commitment we would like from the board this evening so we can go to the DOT and when we apply for another mass trails grant, we're, we'll show that we're committing another $210,000 to the project. I think that's about where we are. That's right. Yep. Okay. Okay, questions from the board, Priscilla? I have one. I don't know how this goes, so I, you know, I'm gonna ask this question. Oh. I know it says um, repaving or paving and restoring on River Road and Farquhar Road. Is it going to change? Is it just paving because it needs the paving, or is it, or is the construction going to affect the road? So the just uh, curious because excuse yep, me, no, no. just because of the bridge. I didn't know if we go through all this now and we repave it. I don't think the bridge will be fixed in the next five years. But if it is, I mean, that's where well, that's where my question is based from. So the actual work itself is the intersection of River and Fakwa roads. There's a oh, map yeah. in your Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the trail comes out on Fakwa Road approximately 250 feet before you get to the intersection, exactly. okay? Exactly what you And so saying. it's that yeah. section and reconfiguring, part of the cost is reconfiguring that intersection to a properly designed T intersection. So it would be a safer, safer. intersection. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good. So, you know, obviously there's the work of adjusting drainage and excavating out the center island and, you know, cutting the pavement, oh, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. And that road does need paving. Right. And that's part, that section of that road definitely needs <laughs> paving. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. No problem. Mike? Is there any proposed source of funds? Would it be a local appropriation or Chapter 90 funds or a combination thereof? Or? Um, we, we intended to use the local funds for the paving in the first place. Um, depending upon the scale of the project, when it's all said and done, we may have a mix or come back and ask for a mix of local funds and Chapter 90 funds. But we've not determined that mix yet. We just want to be able to make the commitment to the project. We have a, mm -hmm. the next round of Mass Trails grants applications close February 1st. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, we want to put in an application, but obviously this is a part of that puzzle that depending on how you decide to vote tonight, you know, we'll work out what kind of grant application it looks like. But, you know, we need to know, you know, your interest in supporting this. Does that answer your question, Mike? Yeah, that, I just, yeah. Oh, know, no, the, the no, source of funding isn't determined yet, but I, right. I, yeah, it's just uh, a commitment to do it. How much do we have in a Chapter 90? $4 million, right? A little over $4 million. Now, I've requested a couple hundred thousand of that for engineering on the Route 20 project for next right. year, but, I mean, it's not going to, I mean, we're not going to make a dent in it. No. no. That's but I imagine once we get into these bigger projects, that money will be called on mm -hmm. substantially. Okay. Anything else? Somebody want to make a motion then, one way or the other? Uh, I'd, like, I'd make a motion to support the uh, trails project. Uh, uh, they, you know. Yeah, that's to agree that the town will fund to and agree. perform the road construction work with an estimated cost of 210000 is part of the Grand Trunk Trail reconstruction project. We will. Let me offer that part so of the moved. current project we're working on, yep. we will have full construction ready drawings that's already part of the existing grant. So yeah. this, you know, there's, we'll, we'll have the permitting done, we'll have all the drawings done. So basically it will be, sh you know, shovel ready for the, whenever the town decides to, you know, start the work. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Five to nothing. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Tom. We'll need a copy of the minutes to go with the grant application. 
You'll need a copy in a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Before the first. <laughs> right. Before the first. Right. No, it's yeah, exciting that something's going to be yeah. done. It's long overdue. Uh, yeah, since 2005, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm just I was talking to Tom this morning. If None of us were on the board then. I was on the Open Space I mean, Committee when it... The Tom application, and, and I mean, uh, Jim Malloy was our town administrator. It's like, you know, that's... Yeah. Quite a while ago. You know, when the board actually authorized this application mm -hmm. for the, to the federal government for a T grant. If, oh. that, if that's the case, would you need <coughs> them approved by the first? We, we will be meeting town meeting night. To, so yeah, Monday. We're meeting at 6.30. If there's any possibility they could be done by then, we could have oh, vote to approve them yeah. so that yeah. you have Tonight. them for your, your yeah. deadline. Instead um, of just sending in a rough draft. That's, I know that's yeah. short, short period we can, of time. We can, you can, if push came to shove, you could uh, just approve that piece yeah. of the minutes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what we can we'll do. But we'll have to notice that as part of the meeting. Yeah. yeah. And Tom Good, you really stuck with this, I know. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and it's now paying off. But yeah. Hopefully. Yes, finally. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you had it, it yeah. probably would have fell by the wayside, it possibly. Probably so. would. I, yeah. yeah. So thank you very much, boys. Yep. Okay, Good thank night. you. Right. <clears throat> okay, next on the agenda, we have a request about the farmers market seasonal liquor permit. Nope. B. Letter, 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 letter of intent. Oh gosh, I do have an eye appointment next month. <laughs> you just want to move along. <laughs> right? You just want to move along, don't you? Yeah. Mm. We. <laughs> Have a request for a letter of in, to approve a letter of intent to apply for an economic development incentive. <coughs> New England Cold. It's down at Stribridge Technology Park. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Would, it, would it be all right if I pass these out? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so while he's doing that, if I may, Madam Chair. So uh, I'm joined tonight by uh, by uh, Mr. Jeff Eklund and Mr. Christopher Bailey, who are representing yes. New England Cold. This is a new project that I will let them describe, but um, it's a new project that's going into the tech park. Uh, all right, then I will, I will turn this over to Chris when he joins us. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So thank you for having us. Uh, we're very excited about this and uh, excited to, uh, to introduce the project. And, um, uh, so far, we have spoken with uh, Jean Bubon, the, the uh, town planner, and with Kevin, and they've both been very helpful. Um, we, uh, we've been uh, given the word by uh, a couple people from the Mass Office of Business Development that Sturbridge would be uh, uh, a welcoming community for our business, and uh, so we're very excited. It's a great location for us. Uh, the business that we're in is, uh, is uh, cold storage warehouse distribution. Um, and uh, so being on the intersection of Route 84 and Route 90 is, is a uh, prime location for us. Uh, so that's the uh, primary reason for, the, for locating here. Um, and uh, so what you see is uh, the, the site plan and the, uh, the perspective uh, rendering of the facility that is planned. We're, uh, we're still in the preliminary stages. Um, it's a little bit early, to be quite honest, for this conversation, um, but uh, because we are applying for the, uh, for the TIF from the town, uh, the, the timing was such that, the, that we needed to take this step now. And so I thought it made sense to, uh, to show you uh, a visual of what we're working on and uh, uh, answer any questions that you might have about what we're doing. So. Questions from the board? Do you have other locations as well? No, this is a new venture. <coughs> okay. This is a new venture. There are, I'm sorry, there, there are um, a real lack of uh, this kind of infrastructure. Uh, really, nationally, it's a pretty significant issue going on that, uh, that this is where the food gets stored before it goes to the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and these kinds of facilities are very expensive to build. It's a very difficult process. Um, and requires a lot of specialized uh, expertise. And uh, we think that we've assembled the team that can make that happen, obviously. That's why we're here. Um, but, uh, but there's a real lack, especially in New England, of this kind of infrastructure. And I noticed in your um, 
presentation, you, you say you're going to use uh, uh, batteries for backup uh, power in, in the event of a major power outage. I know there is a local grocery chain that lost a lot, lot of food recently yeah. because their generators uh, failed. Yeah, and they're not alone. Uh, and, it's uh, obviously a huge problem. It, it was very expensive. I'm glad you brought it up because it's one of the parts of the project that I'm most excited about, to be quite honest. Um, we are uh, working with uh, a couple different um, uh, companies, Massachusetts-based companies, in order to, uh, to try mm -hmm. to figure out how to put together a system that will provide battery storage for energy uh, and also do some on-site generation. We're hoping to, uh, to have uh, solar uh, and possibly some small wind on the property as well um, in order to be able to recharge the batteries. Um, and it's not only, it is a resiliency issue, so it's not only that, but it is also uh, the ability to curb the peak demand times. So uh, the classic example would be when the sun comes up on a July morning and it's already 85 degrees and it's only 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the moment when everybody's air conditioners go on and the heavy duty refrigeration systems on this building obviously uh, take a lot of energy to run and they would have to be running uh, pretty strong at that moment, right, in order to keep the building cold. And what we can do with a, with a uh, uh, industrial scale battery like this is draw off of the battery during that peak time um, and then recharge that battery at night when there's much less demand on the grid uh, and ISO New England really likes that. Uh, National Grid um, is actually very forward thinking on these issues and they have three different programs where they will coordinate with businesses like this in order to draw some of the power from the battery into the grid if they mm -hmm. need it at times and uh, and pay us for that in basically in the form of uh, compensation for when we draw power from them mm -hmm. uh, so it's a it's it's kind of the next generation of what's happening with the grid uh, the fact that we don't have a lot of utility scale uh, storage of energy on the electrical grid uh, is, a, is a huge problem quite frankly it's one of the real bottlenecks in our entire economy mm -hmm. and this is a real chance to be part of the next generation of that. One of the things that that does for us, like a lot of the modern uh, facility that we're gonna create here, is it really extends the useful life of this facility mm -hmm. uh, much further into the future. So we expect this facility will be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. So from, in terms of us uh, at the local level, I mean, having this facility, which is first in the Commonwealth, first in, one of the first in New England, really. Well, I, I mean, I, or, there are certainly or, other frozen storage facilities, sure. but, but it is, we were, Jeff and I were talking about this on our way here tonight. Um, we're not aware of any other uh, new facilities that are being built in New England <coughs> right now. That's a big statement. <laughs> You know, New England's a big place, and there is a huge demand, and the demand is only increasing. The gap between supply and demand is only increasing, um, mm. which is why we feel like even though this is a, a, a massively expensive project, we feel like in the long term it will be a profitable project, um, and uh, so that's, that's why we're doing this. Many of the buildings that are out there right now are, in Massachusetts especially, are 30, 40 years old. A lot has changed in that time mm. frame. They're not efficient, the, you know, but they're at capacity or above capacity. Mm -hmm. They're being used, and we need more of it, but we just can't get there. Well, I was, you know, I was reading through your your uh, presentation here. Uh, you know, I was really you know, Massachusetts, for, uh, for example. I read today is by 2050 wants to be uh, carbon neutral, the whole entire state. And this type of facility is would be uh, go a long way building new buildings like this, uh, where you're not really generating very much carbon, and hopefully the other the rest of the trees we have in the Commonwealth will absorb that, and, and we will eventually become carbon neutral. The goal is to do that by 2050. Yes, sir, absolutely. And and, and this facility has a number of different features to it that will help with that. 
Uh, it is uh, super insulated. These are very specialized facilities, the way they're built. They're very, very heavily insulated, uh, which obviously reduces the amount of energy that they need. The refrigeration systems are very modern and efficient. Um, and the facilities that Jeff's talking about, which we've toured a lot of them that are 40, 50 years old, and boy, they just, they just eat power. It's really a shame. And so as much as we can move toward replacing them with these kinds of facilities, the better off we're going to be. Um, the, the other thing looking towards the future uh, is for our grandchildren and grandchildren is employment, jobs. How many, how many jobs do you think a, a facility like this would create? It's when it's full one. It's on the, one of the sheets. It's oh. 20 in phase one. I just want right. to get it out. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, sir. To yeah the it's, public. it's between 18 and 20 uh, full time. Um, I, it may say 20 on the sheet, and we're, as I said, you know, this is all kind of preliminary at this point, but it'll be between 18 and 20. Uh, we have done very detailed business planning, uh, but as the size of the facility and the mix of product in the facility changes, you know, there's, there's obviously going to be a little bit of flex, but it won't go below 18. And as the board will recall, um, in past TIF projects, you have established, you know, year one, X number of jobs are created year two, you know, X, X plus one. And that will be discussion that, you know, once we get into negotiations, we can hammer out a bit more to say, yeah. you know, by year, you know, five, year five, year 18, or, mm -hmm. or whatever the number is, or however we negotiate it. Mm -hmm. So that can be established as well. One thing that stands out to me, and I, it's kind of my drum to beat, I guess, is that um, this is infrastructure. So it's, we're servicing other manufacturers, retailers, uh, and those people employ people, but they can't be in the area if they don't have a structure like this to you know supply what we're going to be supplying to them so right now because all of the facilities are at capacity in massachusetts we actually have companies that are shipping to pennsylvania to maine and if those people are looking to expand where are they going to go they're going to go where there's infrastructure for them um, so your grandchildren we'd like to keep some of those businesses here this is what's needed to do that What's your projected timeline? Um, let me just say one more thing about that before we yeah, move sure. on from the, the jobs piece. Uh, it's also important to note that all of these jobs are, are considered skilled labor. They're mm -hmm. all going to learn some software packages. They're all going to learn how to operate equipment. They're all going to be safety trained. Um, and they're all going to receive full <coughs> benefits. So these are not part-time jobs. Um, these, are, these are career jobs. So um, the, I'm sorry, your question. I said, what's your projected timeline for? construction and when you'd like to be up and running I know you want to hear the optimistic step. point of view because that's I, the yeah I'm well we'll concerned. hear it all <laughs> we always hear the optimistic right. and then the real you know, development too. of a big building like this you know you, you have to recognize that things don't always go as planned but the plan is that we're going to uh, go through our permitting process we're starting tomorrow morning uh, with Kevin and Jean uh, meeting with department heads to uh, do some site plan review and start talking about what issues uh, there will be of concern and what kind of due diligence we need to provide um, and the plan would be that we build, we break ground this summer um, and, uh, and be weather tight uh, before the snow flies in the fall. Um, the, the big shell of the building and making that weather tight is, is only a percentage of the work that has to be done. Um, and uh, so that would be our hope. And that would allow us to open for business during the first half of 2021. And if I may add, so from a TIF <coughs> perspective, Right now, they're working towards getting their initial state approval at the March EACC meeting uh, in Worcester. Since our next scheduled town meeting is not until June, what would happen is, uh, assuming everything goes and everything works out and they get the approval at the state, they will approve it pending approval at our annual town meeting, unless you have a, another special town meeting ahead of time. Do you have your financing in place at this point? We have, um, let's call it tentative financing, yes. And, and we're working out things like the TIF and the tax credit from the state um, and, uh, and some, of our, uh, some of the issues around the, the power generation and what the capital cost of that will be. Um, but yes, we do have investors. We, we are ready to go. Uh, we need to finalize everything and get all the documents signed, sealed, and delivered. But you... You can't do all of that before you have your permits, before you have no, I understand. all your other financing in place. And to just 
reemphasize what, what Chris is saying. Tomorrow we are meeting, we're having our, our land use meeting. We are going to work with them to try to identify any potential road, you know, bumps in the road and say here's how we can make sure that this process goes as smoothly as possible so that we can get through, through the permitting process quickly and, and meet their optimistic time frame. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Chase? I just wanted to thank you, thank you guys for your interest in Sturbridge. I mean, this is great for our community, a business like this wanting to come in. So thank you. I give you a lot of credit. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. I don't think too many people in town have been down to the uh, technology park mm -hmm. area because mm -hmm. there's a lot down there. There's two yeah. TIF projects that are potentially going to be there um, mm -hmm. in the next year. So it, it's incredible uh, just in the short time, just within the past year, how much development is going on there and some of the businesses that aren't maybe growing um, visibly we know that they're adding staff so there's quite a lot going on down there yeah mm -hmm. so again thank you okay does somebody want to make a motion then to accept so um, okay <laughs> well we have to also name a selectman to be on the uh, Local Incentive Review Committee. Is anybody willing to volunteer? Well, I'm on that other one for. You, you are for the other one, yeah. so if you want, I mean, that's six, six, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. mind. Yeah, because. I'm we, on the other one anyway. Yeah, we have to put your name in okay. the motion. Mm -hmm. All right, then I'll have someone else. I have Mike the motion. Yeah, okay, I'll do the motion then. I'll move to accept New England Cole's uh, letter of intent to apply. Uh, for local tax incentives and to appoint Selectman Guinness to serve on the Land Incentive Review Committee for New England Cold's tax incentive application. Okay, I'll second. <laughs> Doesn't matter whoever you, whoever you put yep, down. Yep. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, five nothing. Okay, thank you for coming in. Thank Thanks you. very much. And hopefully not too many bumps. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> let's we'll, we'll let's have a good project. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Kevin. Thanks for the help. Okay. Next on the agenda we have the farmers market seasonal liquor permit. Kevin, would you like to explain? Of course. Uh, this one's fairly straightforward. Uh, the farmer's market uh, is now entering its third season, which is fantastic. Uh, and every year in the past two years, they've expanded. And this year is no different. Uh, in an effort to make uh, the process a little bit clearer or easier for some of the vendors, uh, some of the liquor vendors specifically, they're requesting that the Board of Selectmen consider creating a one-time seasonal fee for liquor vendors. So currently, if a vendor who wants to sell craft wine uh, wants to come to the farmer's market, they have to come before the Board of Selectmen and get approval for each of the dates and pay for each of those uh, days to participate in the farmer's market. For some, that's cost prohibitive. Uh, uh, what many markets do is they instead have a one-time fee. Or uh, what towns do is they have a one-time fee for that liquor uh, license. So they're asking for a one-time $50 fee uh, for the 2020 season and to limit it to four vendors per market. Um, how many farmer's market days are there? It runs from, I believe, the first or second week in June and it's Sundays through... Uh, October, right? 11. There's 11. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's counting now. <laughs> Speaking of that fee, <laughs> I did some research, and actually, we're only supposed to charge $50. Even though there's individual days, it's still one event, mm. the farmer's market. Because you do have a permit from the state for an official farmer's market, right? Uh, we don't have an official – we're recognized at, at – by uh, – Mass part of agriculture as a farmer's market, but it's not a state designation. As well, a that's market. what I meant. You went yeah. through the yeah. Yeah. application and everything. So um, we've apparently been doing it wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's the easy part. The other part is that only wine can be sold at farmer's market. Correct. Beer can't, other alcohol can't, just wine. And cider is considered wine. Yes, yes. Because I didn't realize 
that last year, and probably even the year before, there was beer sold. There is a craft beer uh, vendor, yes, ma'am. Yeah, but that doesn't fall under. It's only wine, mm. nothing malt or anything. So, so we'll make that we'll, restriction. We'll, we'll have to put that restriction in. Okay. Any questions from the board? I just want to bring something up. We should work on a policy bill for our liquor. We never did that. Right? No. Well, you can bring we it up. Get a universal. Kind of you, giving can, um, you can bring it up Friday. De facto. Yeah. 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 Well, it's really, I mean, everything's different. This farmer's market is totally different than somebody coming for, you know, a one day oh, no, on I something agree. else. I'm yeah. All, I'm all for it. But I just, you know, with all the events and everything, we should have one set of policy so we're not turning people away and accepting people. <laughs> and, it gets yeah. Yeah. and do you get more than four applications from? At Ventures. this point, I believe we only had four last year, so I don't foresee. There may be more that want to apply this year, but I can't yeah, guess. All, all I know is we had four last year. So. Okay. How's the board feel about limiting the number, Priscilla? Can I ask a question? If it were limited, say to four, how would you determine which four? The way that it works and the way that it's set up. On, under the special events committee, the special events committee has uh, set up as a, as within the last week uh, appointed a market manager who will work with a group of volunteers who will actually go through and select and set up the schedule for the entire season. So, and in terms of staff, we're not making any of those decisions. That's all this group of volunteers that is is handling that along with the market manager. Okay, you don't know what their criteria are or anything. Because uh, I hate to see. A local business that wants to do it, he can't because they weren't one of the chosen four. Sure. That's that's the only reason I'm asking. I mean, yeah. and you may not have four. I mean, you may not. Right. And and what I can say is because I wasn't in it this last year as much, I do know that they are they do strive to be as equitable and fair as possible and divide things up as evenly as possible. I know uh, when I was part of the discussions. At the beginning of last season, we spent many hours trying to make sure that we were dividing it up properly. Okay, thanks. Any other <coughs> questions, Mike? You look like you're gonna. Yeah, well, I, I, I kind of have a question because uh, there there is at least one or two uh, local uh, wineries that that uh, also distill these days, and uh, it. Is there a limit on the percentage of alcohol that can can be uh, served? Well, I, th it I just, thought that was that it was just a says, It just says wine, and it specifically said no other alcohol, no beer. Mm. It's just wine because it's considered, you know, they grow the, you know, it's farmers' it's product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's well, agricultural. There's, yeah, there's a local wine. Uh, well, they, they have wine and they also have uh, distilled ciders that are like 20% alcohol. Do we allow that or not? Well, the way the... Um, At the you know, that, reads, I just wanted to bring just, it up. Yeah, it's just, so, as, cause it's it might just come as wine, up. so I would assume that... We'll make sure we get the guidelines yeah, and this comply. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, there's so it, many guidelines. Yeah. I, I don't... Yeah, I would like them to come back if the the distilled wine uh, ciders and wines uh, issue comes up because there are I know there are some. Well, Regar we still. Oops, sorry. Because I bought some for Christmas gifts. Yeah, but we still have to <laughs> approve the licenses when they come yeah. in. Right. Yeah. This isn't approving the licenses. Okay. This, this is just uh, this on is the on the fee. To set the fee. Yeah. To set the, the cost, fee. Right. Yeah. Regard. Yeah. Regardless, there's so whenever anybody comes in and they say I'm going I want to sell alcohol wine it's a red flag of okay you have to go make sure you do th this extra step of going to the board of select so don't they have to go to the state first uh, for they have to they all have they have, they have to get state licenses as well as at the yeah local but they level. also have to have something that says something about the farmers market and that only takes like a 10-day turnover with the state right and we and go. we're registered with the state so they know we're a farmers market so that that's I believe pretty much all we have to do. Yeah. Um, again, 
and I, I will say this. Um, well, actually, I think it's a yearly. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be done yearly. Well, that's something that our, our new market manager will yeah, be taking because, care I mean, of. Yeah, it's astounding all the rules and regulations out there about it. But Just to sell something that grows naturally. <laughs> But, uh, we'll, we'll make sure we review those with the market manager and yeah. get ready for the season. Yeah. I mean, so I mean we, we can even all, you know, if we put the limited for, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we could always change it later. Or we could even put the word approximately. Mm -hmm. That way, if a fifth one came in. Well, that's, I'd, I'd like to make the motion here that, that we adopt the $50 seasonal fee for alcohol sales at the Sturbridge Farmers Market with the yeah. application, with the stipulation that at any given market there'd be no more than four alcohol vendors. Okay, I'd still That's like wine. to change it's still the wine, right? Wine. Yeah. It yeah. has to be, it has to say it wine. It should okay. say rather, wine. Rather than alcohol, alcohol sounds like. Or say wine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. But somebody could hold us to that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to sell. Really, you know. I'm going to sell wine. gin. Yeah. <laughs> so where I just said alcohol sales, I would change that to wine sales. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. All opposed? I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Mm -hmm. Four zero. Okay, thank you, Kevin. You've had a busy night. Yeah, I have. Thank you, Slide. <laughs> Short week, though. <laughs> Sometimes those are longer. <laughs> oh, I know. Okay, next on the agenda, we have old business. The appeal of the water bill from 50. Oh, we should, we're on the new agenda. We're over here. Three mistakes tonight. <laughs> Oh. It's a Wednesday. You're all, it's just the, the feng shui's off. Yeah. Okay. We next. We go back to Monday nights. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next, we have a request to accept the resignation of Ed Page as a police officer. She was the Sturbridge Department. Sharon. It's a lamb ago. Oh. <laughs> Mary, your vice chair. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I don't want you to screw up anymore. I like you when you're here. When's your own appointment? <laughs> next month. <laughs> you better advance it. I think it's maybe. Do you have a dinner date day? coming and you're just hungry and want to get out? No, actually, no. <laughs> He's got a meeting in there. Ah. Uh, oh. <laughs> We're having chicken pot pie. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't make it either, but. Oh. Same point. Okay. <laughs> so. Accept the resignation of Sherry Lamica as custodian for the town of Sturbridge. Okay, she's moving to New York, so it's mm -hmm. quite a trek <laughs> from there to here. Okay, is there a motion then to accept the resignation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, next we have a request to accept the resignation of Ed Page as a police officer for the Sturbridge Police Department. I might. His uh, yes. wife's taking another job, and he's moving to another job that offers him more flexibility on scheduling. Mm -hmm. So, it really wasn't about Sturbridge. It was about what's in his family's best sure. interest. Mm, that's what you. That's what you should do. Mm. What? Take care of your family first. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Is there a motion then? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, next we have a request to concur with the appointment of Brian Lawson as head mechanic for the Department of Public Works. Which you want to come up? During the last union negotiations, they created a position of head mechanic. I think it was something that was in the works before I got here, but I guess that the feeling was that one of the mechanics should be over the other mechanics so they can just divvy out work together, maybe order parts a little more efficiently so instead of working independently. And it takes them out of the uh, purview of the um, crew chiefs too because he really doesn't need to be you know, doing what they need. He, need. he knows what he needs to do. He's going to be a little more uh, active with, with procurement. And uh, so we had advertised and um, Brian Larson, the guy who works with us, he's, uh, he's our, our candidate. 
Okay. Questions from it's the not board? A new, it's not, a, not an additional position. It's, it's more of an upgrade. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions from the board? And that's, this is Brian. <laughs> want to come down? <laughs> <laughs> I just like good to say evening. that it, it is a good move because the mechanic is really a, a very essential position in, in uh, any public works department. And uh, it's a very important position. If, if the equipment isn't running, you can't work. Well, so. and Brian is exceptional. He's not just an average mechanic. And uh, the funny part was um, we didn't get any applications. Really? And we put it in the paper, so I mean, it's it's more important to me that we take care of the, the guy we have because we need him. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, sounds good. Any more questions? Someone willing to make a motion then to S approve the appointment? So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Very good. That Thank easy. You. That was easy. <laughs> Sorry you had to. <laughs> Sorry you sit had to so long. Stay, stay <laughs> so long. We shake your hand. Okay, next we have old business. Yep. Congratulations. 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 If you don't touch the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not your night. I know, but if I have it lower, I can't see over. Okay. <laughs> next we have old business. Um, the appeal of a water bill, 50 Fackler Road. Butch, I know you're here. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, did everybody read over Butch's letter? Anybody have any questions? Which I'm the one that put this on hold for a while. I still think it's way too much. I just have one comment. I, I look over a couple okay. of other road uh, okay. data logging incidents. And most of the time it's the day. And then they know it's or we have a case up here at um, one of the uh, businesses at the plaza where it was busy like one day. So it was a, it was a commercial unit, I don't know how they work, but they have a little pinhole inside it, it clog. Apparently it was clogging and unclogging and clogging and unclogging, they fix it. And then, so it was kind of something you could get your head around. This one, the only thing that puts me about this one is I live in a home, single family home, as you all do. And if I had uh, 9,000 gallons a day going through my house, I'd notice it at some point. That's the only thing that bothers me about the whole thing. The septic system can handle it. Um, we, the toilet probably could have been the, the issue, but it's just the solid two weeks of oh, all that water I running. Mean, that's, just that's it. I mean, I still think it's so much. I mean, I know Shane put down uh, what you get, 15 gallons per minute at the hydrant, but that's that's 12. 1500. Yeah. 1500. Yeah. Well, that's because yeah. I live on the hill and there's no pressure up there. And that's the other thing. If if I had that kind of water running. I wouldn't be able to do anything else. Yeah. That's, you know, my, my showers wouldn't work. That's I don't know if it's like that down there, but I have kind of a me mediocre pressure where I live. So that, that, that kind of thing kind of throws me. But other than that, I mean, it, it's, it's possible. Yeah, so. I, I know it's possible. It just doesn't seem probable to me that I don't know how many people are in the house. I believe there's maybe at least three or four. Yeah, I talked to her. She called me and she oh. says, she, I, th I asked her that. Are you alone in there? Because that was, that was kind of a. You know, if you're alone in there, maybe maybe you don't go to that part of the house for a while. Right. But it's more than just her. It's, yeah. It's, it's and you would think somebody would hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my house, definitely. You couldn't you couldn't walk around the house and not hear it. Yeah. You know, so, but whatever. I'll leave that up to you. Okay. So you couldn't equate. You couldn't get it to that point. You did it at your own house. Yeah, I, I didn't go to her house. I did it no, at my house. No, you tried to run your own. But I, like I said, my pressure's all lower. Okay, the, uh, down there, it's yeah. at least twice what mine is. Yeah. And, uh, it, but it, uh, and I talked to the uh, engineer, Mark Farrell, that designed the system, and he said it's not a good thing to do it, but it could handle it. It could handle the, the uh, 7,000 gallons a day. He, he equated it to putting a, a garden hose on top of a, a pile of sand. Mm -hmm. It's just going to flow right through the sand. It's, it's not going to really cause any problem. And you wouldn't even notice it. So it, it is feasible that... Something could have got stuck and 
and it would, she wouldn't notice it in the backyard. Yeah, see, I, I just tend to agree with Mary on, on, yeah, it's just, on the, it, can, can't we just sometimes read it, it wrong? It's, I, it's a piece of equipment. I mean, a short period. You know, no, I'm just, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, can't it just sometimes be human error that it was not read correctly? You can't ever say that. You if, if you might comment on I mean, that. If, if it's a piece of equipment or a computer, you can't ever say that it's infallible. I mean, right. it, it's never happened is what Shane is saying. It's, it's not common. Yeah, because so. that's, that it's possible, but in my mind, not probable. I mean, anything else, you know, we've had people uh, outside faucets been going and they've been away. Um, we had one with the house and I mean, he has leaks all the time he's, he's recorded three or four of them in the last reading and it, but they're much more you know one like I said one day yeah they catch it two days you know then an intermittent but the seven the 14 days in a row seems seems a little more than reasonable normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. could have I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to assuade you either way I'm just telling oh, you no, what I found no. out okay okay questions opinions motion one way or the other? I'll make a motion not to grant the abatement. Second. Because the, uh, you know, I, and I don't enjoy making that motion, but I think to be uh, fair and equitable to all of the users of our, our water system, I, I have to make the motion that we do not grant this, uh, this abatement. Priscilla, I second it, and my reason is the same. The the meter was proven not to be faulty. Um, we don't know that that water did not get used. We really don't know that. Um, and we've had other people here with similar times, and again, it's not a great place to be, but I agree with uh, Selectman Supernaut that it's for fa fairness and equity as to how all the others have been treated that this has to go the same way, in my opinion. I still, well, I know how I'm going to vote. Um, I still think it's really well beyond what's probable. Let me just put it that way. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Three to two. Okay, thank you, sir. Oh, which sometime could we... Um, get a list of all the water rates for everything you know there, there's minimum right yep yeah yeah it might, might be online but i'll get it to you oh okay okay so yeah. when when there's no snow or ice or <laughs> <laughs> i saw you, the rest of the winter i hope yeah so you checking the ice out on the rink yeah it's open announced that tonight. oh i forgot well it's been on facebook and uh, yeah, word, word of mouth i saw some out there when i came in yeah, there was a nice. that two yeah. kids there this afternoon too. Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, yeah. take care. Last few days, and they won't run. Because <laughs> I, I have to laugh though, because somebody on Facebook, when they said the ice rink is open. Somebody said, "Oh, on South Pond." <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. well, some people just probably aren't too familiar with their Can town. You skate on the ponds in town. I mean, if it gets cold. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Big gallon. Sea Lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speak, speaking about snow and ice, when when we are we anywhere near the budget yet? For well, our, nobody's told us. Huh? We shouldn't. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. We haven't had much. Yeah. We can find out for next meeting. Well, well, when we get to the point where where the budget is used, we have to make, take some action to, right. to yeah. well, extend the, uh, authorize the, you know, deficit spending. Deficit spending. So yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah, that's, the that, one. that's what I'm getting at. That's so we, to our attention. probably that's one, one more, <laughs> one, one or two can, good <laughs> yeah, storms spend. and we'll be at that point, I'm thinking. Yeah. So. Okay, next we have a review of the town administrator's goals. This is for the um, merit pay, and Jeff is eligible.
for the merit based pay up to 2%, like other department heads. So, does anyone have any questions on things? Going through a lot of the goals, some of them are really definitely long term that will take quite a while, but he has been working on them all. Because I love this one. Which one? Um, number five, the facility needs. How I anticipate this plan taking 10 years to complete. 10 years? Mm -hmm. 10 year plan? Yep. Like I said, some of them are longer. And some of them are longer. <laughs> not through anything you've not done. I could do them all in one year, but y'all can't afford it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's right. Neither can you now that you're a resident. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be living here. They'd drive him out. Oh, too. come on now. Yeah. <laughs> some of these, um, some of these goals we can discuss at our. Yeah, well, you'll start with this list on yeah. the first, and you'll. Because I know, off. like some uh, number six, transparency for when tax payoffs on town projects are used. Yeah, we didn't know what that meant. Well, I know what it means. Right. <laughs> and so it, the information's already there. The, the Finance Committee booklet that we get at the town meetings, it's one of the appendix, so you can always see when, okay. like, see the Lake Sewer Project is. So it's, it's already done. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, which, yeah. it's like yeah. 15, where transparency on the finance books to reflect department head salaries, where he has a question, what is it? Yeah. What's the issue? It's that um, Leon had gone to, and it makes sense, but it doesn't give clarity to the resident, that you put in a department number so that they have leverage. So if you hire somebody at $20 an hour and somebody at $15, you don't have to keep adjusting. So it was like a blanket sum. I mean, right. you know, a higher sum to cover the whole department. Well, residents would ask, well, how much does a department head earn? And you really had no answer. Now, it's at the end of the book, but people Nobody. don't go to that point. So if it could be listed, perhaps like um, in a way that they would see what a department had earned and then the, the lump sum after next to it for explanation. Yeah, That's because, what it is. Yeah, because we settled that last year that we would be going back to the way we did it. Right, yeah. right. And, uh, you know, Barbara knows how to yeah. set it up. It's, you know, department head salary. And, okay. You know, because... It is, it is more transparent. It is more transparent. And even when people look for jobs, yeah. you know, they go to those books and say, oh, I don't know what the guy, what the yeah, girl right. I That's think that we, we're not going exact, well, this is my understanding, and I correct me if I'm mistaken. I don't think we're going ex back to how we used to do it um, exactly before. Before, one of the reasons is they want to be able to move the money around. Mm -hmm. Barbara wanted to be able to move the money around from li line item to line item. Right. And that's why she just wanted that entire amount approved. Um, and we thought that there was definitely merit, but some yeah. selectmen and probably the whole board just wants to know right on the budget what the department head right. salary is. It doesn't have to be a separate line item in mm -hmm. terms of not being able to move the money around, but right. just visible to the residents when they look, I think was mm -hmm. how we yeah. right. decided. So, yeah. so Barbara and I talked the other day about the construct of those lines. So what you'll see is the department head salary, yeah. the other personnel costs, but you'll vote a lump sum, mm -hmm. but you'll still see the, Correct. the pieces. Yeah, right. yeah, that's the what same with the non-payroll items, you'll see each the four categories yeah. separately but you'll vote one number yeah and then if yeah, there's a little money left because somebody was hired for a lesser amount you can move it to a different part yeah. of the yeah. budget mm -hmm. budget but that's, yeah, that's that's what that meant that's what we're going to do you know and then these others we can so you'll start with last year's list of goals yeah on february 1st and we'll add and subtract as, yeah. as and you want to right we can uh, bring in more goals yeah Keep me busy. Yeah. Um, so this was just to help us decide on merit base incentive pay. Does somebody have any idea percentage? Because we can, it's up to 2%. Um, I mean, my own view is that I think um, Jeff has done a really good job taking the ball and running with it. 
with the goals, um, with the kind of, ini kind of initiatives he's brought to us, whether or not we've adopted them. And I would personally think that um, he's earned the, the two percent merit increase, and I would support that. Is that a motion? Oh, well, I was just putting my sentiment out there, but oh. I can I can formulate it in, the, in terms of a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion that we um, grant the two percent merit increase to our town administrator. Okay, it's not an increase; it's a supplemental. I, I'm, did I call it an increase? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. Yeah, um, a merit supplemental. Um, merit based uh, merit based incentive incentive, incentive. in the amount of two percent. <laughs> Which equals twenty-eight hundred dollars. I didn't know what the exact amount yeah. was in the amount of twenty-eight hundred dollars. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? I'd just like to say thank you. It's been a great almost ten months, so yeah. I've enjoyed it, and uh, I'm looking forward to what's next. Ten more months. Yes. Ten years. Ten years. And I realized it was years. even yeah, it's just shy of a year. Yeah, it's just shy of a year. Time flies when you're having fun. And, and you know yeah. what? I just want to say one thing on camera too. Every time I go to a public function here, whether it's the tree lighting, whether it's the farmer's market, I run into you, Jeff, and I think that's great. Mm -hmm. so well, not only it's that, the but all the living in town. All the meetings yeah. he goes oh, to, too. Yeah. yeah. That's the plus. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. I've enjoyed it very much. Okay. So any more discussion on that? So we have a motion, a second. All in favor? Okay. Five to nothing. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Correspondence. Oh, oh well. Old business. <laughs> old business. No, we did business. New business. New business. Oh. No more old business. Oh, that we, we don't may have. have. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm still. I still have not got used to listing what we're doing on old and new. I know because we always had it open, open that we ended. could bring whatever we yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, old business, Priscilla. <laughs> it's just because I, I have one. <laughs> um, a while back. I had asked about um, national grid outages that were not mm -hmm. weather related. And I just learned tonight on, a, on speaking of national grid from Tom Chamberlain that the, the funds and all that we appropriated for him to, to, for them to take down the trees um, because of the diseases from, from, from the bugs. Um, national grid now, uh, Tom told me, will not take them down anymore. It now becomes the homeowner's property if the tree trunk is like 10 feet from the wires, whatever, mm -hmm. something to that effect. And so they won't touch it. They won't prune them. They won't, um, even if your tree is growing and it's a town tree even, mm -hmm. and it's growing over the wires, they won't prune them. They, they won't cut them. They won't do anything. We've made arrangements for National Grid to be here at your second meeting in February. Oh, good. So you can ask those questions. And okay, we can good. Get them on tape. Thank yeah, you. I apologize for the time. Um, the representative wanted to make sure he could gather all the information and have his team with him at the meeting and then storms kind of delayed some oh, yeah. things so the second meeting February they should can be you there. can you when you prepare when he's coming in can you ask about that sure about what Tom Chamberlain told me Tom has all the information okay. on that. Um, and he he told me this tonight and I, and I said to him it's amazing you brought this because I'm planning on bringing up national grid <laughs> under old business so that's that's of concern because a lot of our trees have not been done yet and we had appropriated money and national grid was working on it he also told me that when national grid recently uh, very recently went for a, a rate increase because of all the trees that they had to take down from all the gypsy moths. They were denied the rate increase because they were told that you haven't exhausted your monies in taking down trees. So it seemed that the side effect of that was, okay, fine, so we're not taking any down now. This seems to be hand in hand. So if you could find that out, then they can come totally prepared. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Chase, old. No. Mike, old. Um, I, I just wanted to bring up uh, the the question of uh, cable TV uh, and what uh, I, I I wanted to know if we're moving ahead on getting people active on the uh, cable advisory. I have not had a chance to recruit, but no. I intend to get that out in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's just a reminder. Yeah. Of course, because yeah, we've. Um We've only actually had that committee each time 
we've that there's renewed. a contract. Yeah. But, I, but it's nice to have a little oversight in between. I, I, of I think we need some oversight on cable <coughs> uh -huh. at this point. Um, okay. That's it. Okay. Mary Old? No, not tonight. Okay. New. Priscilla? <laughs> no. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> Mary? No. Okay, um, I do have something new to go along with the lights. Um, there's been on so social media, I don't always pay a lot of attention to it, but a lot of complaints, and I have gotten complaints from people about the street lights along Route 20, about how it's very difficult, particularly at the crosswalks, and particularly certain areas where the lights are out. So I had spoke to Jeff earlier about it, and he's, <coughs> excuse me, he's going to follow through and check because the last time I went down the road, I counted at least four lights that were out. And it's a dark road anyways. So he's going to follow through on Make that. Make sure we get those fixed. Yes. Can, I, can I chime in because that kind of alerted me to something? Uh, you know, the, the sidewalks are not good along Route 20. I know we don't enforce that bylaw anymore, requiring sidewalks businesses are crosswalk. to do it. No, I'm talking about the sidewalks. I know you triggered this when you said <laughs> they have problems like crossing this in the um, crosswalk. But the sidewalks are full of ice. It's very inconsistent as to like where it's shoveled and where it's not. Mm. I know Butch has done a great job up, in, but now there is a lot of ice, and if we're responsible for the sidewalks, and there are a lot of walkers, um, we need to we need to address that, especially along, um, you know, where the state garage is, and then all the way down mm -hmm. to Chip. the um, bridge, pretty much till you get to the public house. Um, Friendlies doesn't do it, and so. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into that too. All right. Okay. Correspondence. Mike. January 13th, uh, we got a letter from KP Raw uh, inviting uh, the Board of Selectmen and, uh, to the Leader in Public uh, Sector Law 66th an Annual Hospitality Reception on Friday. January 24th, uh, 2020. Uh, also on January 13th, we've got a letter from Massachusetts Municipal Association uh, regarding the annual business meeting agenda booklet uh, for January 25th, 2020. And I believe it's also the 24th, 24th and 25th. Oh, the, the business meeting's on the 25th. That's right. Uh, also on January 13th, we got uh, a letter from the Last Green Valley. Consider sponsoring October 2020. I guess that's a long ways off, but we uh, we we probably will bring that up at a future selectmen's meeting, whether we want to sponsor or support uh, Walktober, yeah, which I, encourages people to walk. Yeah, I know. Um, years ago, we had walking tours in town okay i'm not sure we're able to actually sponsor give money for things like that mm -hmm. um but it's really that's not why i use the word support to, as well and we, we should at least consider the right. sta i think does it support yep. those I yeah think so. yeah yeah okay and on yeah. also on <coughs> the 13th of january we we received uh uh, a letter from the Office of Community uh, Affairs regarding Sturbridge Auto Sales. And, uh, it was for, re as I recall, the letter was regarding the Lemon Law. Yeah, they need to. We need to make sure that certain decals are on their used car sales, and we're we're in that process. Mm -hmm. yeah, because um, he had trouble with that before in the past. Yeah, we, we've even have, had had uh, an officer from the. Registry of Motor Vehicles yes. come in and discuss so that with us. Yes. So he's we got him. He's a, habitual. Yes, well, I, I I know his business. Yes. Yeah. 
we'll, we'll, we'll get it's, compliance. It's part of what we have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, January 13th as well, we got a letter from Charter Communications Change. regarding upcoming chart changes. Uh, none of the prices are going down. <laughs> uh, January 14th, we have a letter from Schlesinger and uh, Bushbinder LLP regarding Heal Inc. Community Bef Benefit Agreement Payment. Mm -hmm. And uh, on January 16th, we received a letter from 253 Organic uh, transmitting uh, letters of support for marijuana re their marijuana retail location. Right, I noticed they were um, business owners along mm -hmm. 131. Yeah. And that's the list of correspondence for January 22nd, 2020. Okay, did the um, STA or somebody get this? Mm -hmm. From the last Green, Green Valley? Valley? Yes, it did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I talked to Kevin just about it. Just my, just my uh, larynx. Yeah. Okay, Citizens Forum. <laughs> Step right up. Yeah. <laughs> Not all at once. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Not Five people. to nothing. Last year, you Thank had you. the same thing, I recall. Remember, you, you could. Yeah.